This is Money Made Simple, the financial podcast that keeps it simple and gets to the point. Kia ora and welcome back to the show brought to you by Simplicity. Morning Jenny. Good morning Liv. So today's episode is something that's very close to our MD and founder Sam's heart and that is around the many types of fees charged in the finance industry for different financial products. In fact, avoiding high fees and interest is Sam's fifth golden rule. It is, yeah. In the book version of Money Made Simple, Sam talks about how fees are prolific in the finance industry. Everything from account fees to credit card fees, merchant fees, management fees, performance fees, administration fees, disarmament payment fees. God, the I, list goes on, it right? It really does, yes. Yep. And each little fee may seem not so much. So one or two percent of a balance or of whatever you're talking about can feel like it's nothing to worry about, right? But the fact is that they really can add up depending on which financial product you're looking at. Yeah, and especially when you add them up across all the services and products that you pay for. So today we're going to touch on the difference that lower versus higher fees can make, particularly in the example of KiwiSaver fees, because you know we love KiwiSaver, Mm. um, but also in the interest that you pay to a bank for particular financial products. Well, not not just a bank, right? No. So the interest that you pay on like home loans or credit cards. To anybody, not just a bank. (laughs) So let's start with Sam's favourite example with our famed oranges, probably not famed, but our favourite oranges to represent KiwiSaver fees. Jenny, I think you've done this a few times in your face-to-face presentations, right? I've done it a few times. Sam does love to um, use real oranges for this example, so I've actually bought real oranges She's, here today. Yep, she's not lying. There are they five smell, five oranges sitting here on our delicious. table. So this is sort of an example that Sam uses it to make it quite simple, visual way of... Uh, Explaining fees and, and, and what kind of effect they have on your growth, right? Yes, absolutely. Yep. So in this example, we're looking at KiwiSaver. And I have five oranges, and we're going to assume that each orange represents 1%. And and that KiwiSaver fund you you invest in makes Mm -hmm. 5% return a year. Just for example, right? That's not a particular um, average. We're just imagining for ease's sake. And also because there were only five oranges (laughs) in the kitchen. So we're in a KiwiSaver fund and we've made 5% returns on that fund in a year. Okay, and let's assume that the average KiwiSaver growth fund charges a fee of 1% each year. Yes, so actually according to Sorted.org, for a growth fund, that average fee level is 1.2%. So we'll just go with 1% average fees. I can cut these oranges up for you if you want to <laughs> Into get. a point two. No, let's go with 1% and how that compares to our hypothetical 5% growth rate. So you take away one orange from your 5% growth. So you take away your 1% fee. Yes, I am left with four oranges or 4%. So I have actually lost 20% of my returns in Mm. any given year to fees. Mm. So let's put that into a real example of say you've accrued $50,000 in your KiwiSaver account after however many years of um, contributing. You're in a growth fund, and let's say, as we talked about, your fund achieves 5% growth over one year. So that is basically $2,500 of returns. For that year, if you're getting charged that 1% in fees that we imagined, which is 1% of your total balance, that means that the fee charge for the year on the 50K is $500. And as we talked about, that's hypothetically a fifth of the growth that your fund experienced being taken away in fees. Yeah, and if it's taken away, because you guys all know so much about compounding interest now, because we've been talking about it lots, that is 1%, that is $500 that's not sitting in your account, earning money over years and years and years and years, that's going to your provider. So that's not just $500 missed out on. Yeah. Yeah. And there are always going to be charges and fees mm, for things. Of course. But it's just being really aware, right, of, of the, the, the true the difference cost between fees. of yeah. the fees. Yeah. yeah. So to illustrate this difference, let's compare your 1% example to the case where you choose a KiwiSaver provider which charges lower fees. Yeah, and of course we've got an easy example, right? We sure do. <laughs> Simplicity charges our members one management fee 
of 0.29% of your total balance per year across all our diversified KiwiSaver and investment funds that we offer. Shit, yeah, because that's what, like, less than a third of the 1% fee that was actually an even lower hypothetical number than the actual average growth fund fee, according to Sorted.org. And while these obviously both seem like really small amounts when we're talking in the vicinity of, say, 0 to 1% fees, we can actually illustrate what kind of difference this can make. Yeah, so using the same assumptions that we made on the 1% yearly fees example with a $50,000 balance, if you're then deducting a 0.29% fee from that instead, you'll be paying around $145 for the year. In fees. Yes. And using the same hypothetical 5% return rate over one year, you're still earning $2,500 dollars, which is five percent of your fifty thousand dollar balance. As we said, yep. Yep. But with the lower fee of zero point two nine percent or one hundred and forty five dollars, that's now just five point eight percent of the returns that your fund made being taken away in fees. Yep. And compare that to your previous example of five hundred dollars, which was a fifth of your hypothetical returns. It's a difference of like $355 a year that gets left in your account rather than going to your KiwiSaver provider. And again, you can imagine the effects of compounding growth on that $355 a year over time. It could make a really big difference. Exactly. And that's one of the reasons why we actually care about fees so much and why it's part of our strategy as a non-profit to keep pushing those fees even lower when we can as we know what a difference it could make for our members' long-term investment balances. So let's put that into the broader market context and and look at total amounts of KiwiSaver fees taken by providers to manage members' money on a yearly basis. Liv, I know that you have some stats at the ready for us. I do. Yeah, so there are some great stats and information in Sam's um, book, Money Made Simple, which I've got handy here, but also some more updated ones to boot. So... FMA puts out an annual report which publishes the total KiwiSaver fees charged by providers across the industry. So in 2022, in the 2022 KiwiSaver year, this figure was $650 million, there or thereabouts. And in 2023, so the 2022 to 23 year, which has just come out recently, it was $692.6 million. I mean, that, that is an increase, but just to point out that that's also largely due to the increase in total funds under management. Yeah, and more people being in the scheme, right? Yeah, so there's more money in the scheme and therefore 1% of more money is more money. No, makes sense. So if you spread that $692.6 million out on a per member basis over the, I think it's almost 3.2 million people invested in the KiwiSaver scheme, doing some really simple maths and we are just kind of spreading it out over the people in a simple way here, this means that people would be paying on average about $220 in annual fees. Yeah, and I mean the fees are balance weighted, right? So obviously right. people with higher balances are paying more in fees and people with lower balances are paying less to- lower of fees. that total proportion. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And so that includes also people in what we call default funds, which tend to be Um, lower fee options because they've been chosen by the government for that reason. Yeah, in fact, in the FMA's annual KiwiSaver report, they showed that default members on average were paying around $64 per annum in fees versus active choice members that were averaging about $245 per year. That's quite a big difference, right? Mm. And this is because the government prioritised competitive fees using a balanced fund type uh, when they selected the current six default providers. Which we are one. We sure are. Yes. Yeah. So according to Sorted.org, our favourite resource, for growth funds, which is the most popular type of fund in New Zealand for KiwiSaver members in terms of total members, as we talked about, the average fee is 1.21%. This means that In simple terms, if you have a balance of $50,000 in the average growth fund, you'll pay around $540 a year in management fees on that balance, as well as an average annual membership flat fee of around $15 on top of that. Not to mention potentially other fees, Mm. which don't go directly to the provider, but this could include commission fees for if you've used a financial advisor or other affiliates. Yeah, right. So, lots of different things. So, yeah, in terms of total fees that someone may pay over a lifetime, this is obviously variable for a number of reasons, Mm. from how much someone's earning to how much 
they are, their employers are contributing, annual returns in any given year, the type of fund they're in, and of course the huge varying levels of fees uh, between providers. Mm. Um, but it's going to be in the vicinity of tens of thousands of dollars. Like over your lifetime, right? Yes. Yeah. So fees which are seemingly insignificant each year, mm. like... 1% or less than 1%. Or a couple of hundred bucks. Yes. Right? They really accumulate to a meaningful number over a lifetime and they can offset net returns and thus that compounding, the compounding effect. Yeah, that we love. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And as Jenny said, there are many other things that can affect your KiwiSaver balance in addition to fees. Like she said, the fund type that you choose, the returns achieved, I think, that we might not have mentioned yet. And time in the scheme, which remember, that's a really big factor of compounding returns um, and more. So fees are just one part of the puzzle as to how much you could have at retirement. But in our eyes, an important part of the puzzle. Yes, very important. Mm. And I think, well, we won't go into this in any detail. It's worth mentioning other fees in the financial sector. And mm. Sam definitely goes into this a bit more in the book. But, mm. you know, we all have a bank. And we mm -hmm. all pay fees and charges for the services that banks provide. Mm -hmm. But banking is a very profitable industry, uh, as I'm sure many of you are aware. And this profit's generated from our account fees, the interest that we pay on credit cards, personal loans and mortgages. Yep. Um, but I think Sam's main point here... In, from the book, yep. That, yep, that he mentions in the book, is just be aware. Mm. In fact, he uses the language, he says be paranoid about the fees and interest that you pay. And in terms of interest, this means avoiding debt where possible, paying it off as fast as you can, or at least paying it on time so you don't have to pay penalties. Yes, on penalties top. can be nasty, can't they? Yeah, and minimising fees. So uh, I was just thinking about this for myself the other day. Do I need multiple <laughs> savings accounts? Yeah, so because every account or fund or if anything that you put into. Yeah, potentially has some kind of fees. And again, even if it's only a few dollars here and a few dollars here, it you forget really it for years and years and it, yep. Yep, it yep. really adds up. Cool. So let's apply the example of paying higher interest within the banking environment. So specifically for mortgages, and this is something you touched on with Dan last week. Mm. So yeah, even differences of 1% in interest rates on a mortgage can make a really big difference over the long term, especially given we're talking in, you know, usually quite large amounts of money um, and hence large total amounts of interest. So for example... And we're not going to talk about current interest rates here. We're going to just use some simple interest rates um, so that it's a little bit easier to visualise. So let's look at a 5% interest rate and let's compare this to a 6% interest rate. And we'll assume that you pay one of these two rates over a 30-year mortgage term on average. So we're saying this could go up, it's like it is at the moment, and down, way down like it was a year ago. So let's just assume you either pay a 5% interest rate over 30 years or a 6% interest rate over 30 years. Okay. Cool. So we'll use this with an example of $500,000 initially borrowed and paying fortnightly payments. So according to Sorted.org's mortgage calculator, the total interest paid on that 5% average rate would be $465,813, so that's your interest only over the 30 years, whereas the total amount paid on an average rate of 6% over those 30 years would be $578,674. Wow, so paying the 5% uh over the six percent could save you more than a hundred thousand dollars over the an interest term, just an in interest yeah yeah so it's really worth hunting around for the best interest rates that you can get when you're looking for either your first mortgage or when you refix it it can actually mean a lot more of a nest egg or, or less debt in your later years Cool. So let's be pretty clear here. Fees, and we're specifically talking about financial products, but this can definitely be extrapolated out to other yeah, industries. Yeah, there's fees everywhere, right? There are fees everywhere. Mm. Can A, differ greatly. Yeah, between providers or funds or, or whatever. Yep. yep. And B, make a big difference in the long run. To your savings yep, when you're so paying. so if you compare low versus high. Yes. Yep. So there are lots of other variables that can come into play when you look at the money that you pay or make from a provider, but it's very much worth being aware of the difference that fees can make. And amongst all the other things, right? Life is complicated, Liv. Yes. Cool. So what's next week then? 
Next week, uh, I'm actually booting you off the Ooh, podcast, cool. Liv. Give me a break. I'm inviting a guest of my own. Um, I'm going to have Rebecca Roberts. She is the manager of the Simplicity Foundation. A come lovely and, woman, right? She really is. And she's going to come and chat to us a little bit about how the foundation works, how Simplicity supports the foundation, and a little bit about some of the charities that they support. So I hope that you'll join us. It will still be educational. Mm, absolutely. But maybe uh, a little bit more feel good. We need a little positivity sometimes, I right? I think so, yes. So join us next week with Rebecca Roberts, and we'll see you then. Cool. Awesome. Bye. This podcast contains personal opinions and is intended to provide educational information only. It doesn't relate to your particular financial situation or goals and is not financial advice or recommendations. Simplicity New Zealand Limited is the issuer of the Simplicity KiwiSaver Scheme and Investment Funds. For product disclosure statements, please visit Simplicity's website, simplicity.kiwi.